tonight on 16 by 9. The numbers are on the rise. There are more men in the reproductive ages, so 18 to 45, who have infertility than have diabetes. Men who can't have children. 99% less likely than the average guy to get, you know, to get pregnant. Scientists are on the hunt to figure out why. There's no question that pesticides produce sperm count. And to find ways of helping men have families of their own. For couples, no price is too high. We basically will do whatever it takes. We want a family, and that is our dream. But what are the risks when science outsmarts nature? Perhaps they are not meant to have children because they are not meant to pass on their genes. Here's Carolyn Jarvis. If you thought raising a child was the most challenging part of having a family, consider the fact more people than ever are having trouble conceiving a child. The surprising side to this trend is that half the time it's the men who have the issue. Now, some scientists suggest male fertility is on the decline around the world. Tonight, in a special 16 by 9 report, our Beatrice Politi takes an in-depth look at the reasons why, the costly solutions, and the ethical questions of finding a way around nature's plan. The first time I saw Amy, she didn't notice me, uh, and I noticed her immediately. I knew pretty early on. Nick was like no one I'd met before. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. -I, I thought he was pretty cute. <laughs> I, I would have had, yeah, I concur. First comes love. There was just this undeniable chemistry, as they say. It's just when you know, you know. She's my, my friend. She's my everything. Second comes marriage. We plan to get a house and get a dog and have some kids and... and... We wanted to finish college, get good jobs, and get married, buy a home, and start a family. Then comes a baby in a baby carriage. They told us we were young and we had nothing to worry about. We definitely knew that we wanted kids. I thought we're a fertile family. I just knew that after sort of three months, four months, okay, something's not right here. Only sunshine, you make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. It's something most of us take for granted. Being able to conceive a child, creating a family. Dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Yet for thousands of Canadians, it's not that easy. One in six couples have trouble conceiving. Numbers that are on the rise in Canada, and not just among older couples. In the past, it's almost always been assumed it was the woman's problem. Yet about 50% of infertility has to do with the male. Well, there are more men in the reproductive ages, so 18 to 45, who have infertility than have diabetes. That infertility could have an impact for generations to come. I think we have an endangered male. Nicholas Ruskowski may be one of those endangered males. At first glance, he's a man who has it all. Highly educated, a senior executive, and most recently, newly married to Amy. It was completely taken for granted that within a year of being married, we would have started our family. That year came and went, still no baby. It's so easy to rationalize, oh, we're stressed, we're putting too much pressure on ourselves. But a visit to a fertility clinic turned up a different problem than stress. Nicholas has next to no sperm. So you develop this mental image of these exceedingly lazy sperm, you know, lying around on the beach, smoking cigarettes, having a beer as opposed to, you know, getting, getting to work. Joking aside, Nicholas was face to face with a tough new reality. For me, it was a huge shock. Not only did I have low fertility, but, you know, it was pretty dramatic. Like, 99% less likely than the average guy to get, you know, to get pregnant. Uh, there was a lot of guilt uh, because I felt that I had done this to myself. Uh, and it's hard not to feel that way because really there's so little to explain male infertility. His sperm counts are exceedingly low, around 2 million. 
the average count, according to the World Health Organization, is 40 to 60 million per milliliter. Some might chalk it up to bad luck, a genetic flaw. But could it be something more ominous? New science is raising some scary questions. Is fertility declining, especially among men? For some, there's no doubt sperm counts are declining. I think it is a problem. I think it's a, it's a very serious problem, and I think it's part of a larger problem. Ready? Men are shooting a lot of blanks. So in a typically healthy man uh, who is fertile, out of the millions of sperm that he has, 8 to 10 percent are actually useful. Right. Back in the 1990s, a controversial Danish study painted a dire picture that suggested sperm counts were falling at such a rapid rate that there would be almost no sperm left in 50 years. Is there really? This 50% decline in 50 years in male sperm counts? Big deal. So I was skeptical. Skeptical, but still intrigued. Swan decided to do her own test. She came up with the same results as the Danish researchers. Then she looked at the sperm counts of men in Missouri, New York, Minnesota, and California. The men in central Missouri had about half as many moving sperm. Swan had a theory about what was going on. Could it be chemicals in the environment? There are 80,000 chemicals in commerce, and most of them have not been tested. There's no question that pesticides can reduce sperm count. The question is, how much do you need to do the damage? Last year, Swan looked at another population, university and college-aged males in Rochester, New York. Men, just like these swimmers, considered to be at their physical peak, their prime of life. And what did you find? First of all, that their sperm quality was not great. 23% of the men had counts, which would be grounds for going for seeing an infertility doctor. But some scientists say we're worrying about the wrong thing. Perhaps it's not the quantity of sperm that counts. What you do have to worry about is the quality of the sperm. Take a look at this highway. Now picture each car as sperm. Like these cars, each sperm looks about the same. But what you need to know is the kind of engine inside. Sperm that swim well, that recognize the egg, that have good DNA integrity. That's what matters. Dr. Keith Jarvie says it can be a game of chance. I mean, I have guys come in with two or three million sperm. They have kids. Someone who looks very similar, sitting opposite me with 20 or 25 million sperm, having difficulty having children. So there's something about the sperm that we can't necessarily measure. It's basically Las Vegas. If you have more sperm, you're more likely to roll good dice. When a man orgasms during sex, millions of microscopic tadpole-like organisms swim for their lives, with one goal in mind, to fertilize a waiting egg. But only the strongest swimmer will make it to its destination. Sometimes there may not be any sperm in the ejaculate, or the sperm may not be swimming in a straight line. That's called a motility problem. Other times, their shape just isn't right. That's a morphology problem. Then there's the biological clock. Men have one too. It just ticks a little differently. As women age, their supply of eggs dwindles drastically. In men, the sperm is still there, but the quality changes. They don't move as fast. They're the wrong shape and more of the DNA is damaged. There has been studies showing that when the father is older and the mother is young, the incidence of autism and the incidence of schizophrenia is higher. Uh, some studies are only one and a half times higher, other studies are up to four or five times higher. But regardless of the potential risks, medical science has turned its attention to solving the problem of the endangered male. One thing that we do know for certain is that there are certain forms of male infertility that by their very presence, we know that they will be transmitted to the offspring. Next on 16 by 9, are infertile men at higher risk of cancer? About two and a half times more likely to develop 
high-grade, so clinically significant prostate cancer.